She was afraid of the stars. On cloudless nights, when they were out and shining, she would close every curtain in the house. When I asked why, she said they were eyes. They were watching. It started one summer when we went camping. Dad took us to the mountains. He always said we would go. We spent the day hiking and fishing, swimming. It was perfect. The night came, and you wouldn't believe the darkness. Like a blanket over the earth. Like nothing was there at all. Except for the sky. The stars burned like silver fire above us. My sister watched them with awe and wonder. What do you think is up there? She asked me. Nothing, I said. You have no imagination. The possibilities are endless. After that night, Emily would never wonder about what was up there again. We talked in our tent until we fell asleep. We've thought a lot about it since. About those last moments of normalcy. The thing is, I don't remember falling asleep or even getting tired. The more I think about it, the more I'm certain that I didn't. I never fell asleep. Emily was just gone. I waited at first. I tried to sleep, but my body wouldn't let me. It was as if I knew something was wrong. After a long while, I realized she wasn't coming back. I left the tent and called to her. There was only black out there. That and the smell. I couldn't place it. It wasn't exactly burning rubber. Nothing as grating as that, but something like it. It was faint, like something had been there. A machine or maybe a train. Something massive. When there was no answer from the woods, I went to my father's tent. I opened the tent zipper and saw there was no one inside. I stood there, unsure of what to do. Part of me knew they were most likely just gone for the moment. That they would be back in minutes and everything would be fine. But in that dark, and with only a slight push of the wind making any sound at all, I did wonder, what if they never came back? What if I never saw them again? That's when I saw the light. It lit the hill to the north. On the other side would be the road we had taken to get here. I walked to it. The light was steady. I held my hand out ahead, blocking the beam as I climbed the hill. My father's pickup truck was running, its headlights burning toward me. I walked to the driver's side of the car. My father was sitting inside. His eyes followed me as I moved to him. He smiled. Emily was sitting in the passenger side, staring ahead. I wondered then if I was dreaming, but the moment dragged and I could feel the cold of the night making my skin prickle and my bare feet getting wet from the dew on the grass. I was awake. What's going on? I asked. We'll sleep in a hotel tonight, he told me. Why? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. We're just going now. We'll be back for our things in the morning. He smiled a fixed smile and reached across my sister's lap to open the passenger door for me. In complete confusion, but with no wish to stay there alone, I walked to the front of the car and got in beside my sister. My father pulled the gear to reverse. There was a slight dip in the short hill and I was able to see our campsite as the headlights passed over it. There was a man standing between the two tents. He was grinning. I made no sound. I was too terrified. As we drove the winding road, I wondered if he had been there standing in the dark while I was searching for my sister. I knew he had been wearing a dark suit and that something about him was wrong. 
But as we drove on, my memory of him faded. I, I couldn't retain any details. At the motel, my father got a room for him and one for us. Emily immediately went to the bathroom. When she came out, she said nothing but just crawled under the covers. I tried to ask her what was happening. She didn't say anything. She just lay with her back to me and fell asleep. Or pretended to. Without wanting to turn on the TV, but being scared and feeling totally alone, I moved to the curtains and pulled them back to look at the parking lot outside. Maybe I could pass the time by people watching. Close it! Emily yelled. I was startled to the point where I did nothing, just stood there and looked at her. She jumped up and ran across the room. She pulled the curtains from my hands and closed them tight. She held the fabric like it was all that stood between us and a raging fire. Don't open it, she told me. She never explained why, but her fear was infectious. When I went to bed, I couldn't sleep. I would keep turning my eyes to the curtains. They were lit from the back by lights in the parking lot. I kept waiting for a silhouette to creep along. I saw all kinds of things in my mind, but nothing came. The fear followed me as I finally did fall asleep. I had a dream that I woke in the middle of the night. Something was bothering me, a sound. At first I couldn't tell what it was. Then I realized it was whispering. It was coming from Emily's side of the room. I could hardly see anything in the dark, but I could tell she was not in bed. Emily was just a shape in the darkness, standing against the wall next to the open bathroom door. She was facing me. I wondered why she didn't say anything. After a few moments, my eyes adjusted and I could tell she was barely awake. Maybe not at all. Her eyes were only partly open, and all I could see were the whites. The voice, the whispering, it wasn't coming from her. It was a man's voice. It was coming from inside the bathroom. Even though all I wanted was to run, for some reason I turned and looked, but the bathroom was too dark. I couldn't see anything, only hear it. But the words were too fast to discern, and they were not in English. I ran back to the bed and covered my ears. I remained like that until I fell asleep. It was many years before I could admit to myself that it hadn't been a dream. Emily was never the same again. She would never go out after sunset, not even to the porch. Our father died some years after that. On the night of his wake, we stayed up at the kitchen table talking. I told her I barely remembered how he used to be before that night. She said her and my father had conversations about what had happened. They spoke about it every night. That took me by surprise. He had never mentioned anything to me. They said they would talk all through the night until dawn. Partly because they were afraid to go to sleep at night. And then she told me what the man had said to her. The man I saw in our campsite. The man who whispered from the bathroom that night and would sometimes come to see her on the night she was alone. His name is Indrid Cold, she told me. He's from a place called Gathering. The more I tried to understand, the less anything made sense. You saw him? I asked her. You know him? I don't know why he's always smiling like that, she said. She was trembling. I woke in the middle of the night. She had begged me not to go to sleep, but I couldn't keep my eyes open. I felt guilty leaving her alone at the kitchen table, drinking her coffee, but 
I didn't believe there was anything to be afraid of. Whatever happened had happened many years ago, and I had no reason to fear the night. Before I had said goodnight and gone to bed, Emily told me one last thing. We will see you again, she said. That's what he always says when he leaves. When I woke, I felt something was wrong. It was the same feeling I had in the tent all those years ago. My stomach clenched and soured. I felt something pulling at me to go to the window. When I looked out, all I saw was the silent dirt road, the grass and the single street lamp. I looked up to the sky, expecting to see the moon or an array of stars, but there was nothing, just black. I assumed there was a cloud overhead, and then I smelled it again, not quite burning rubber. It wasn't until weeks later that the thought occurred to me that something may have been there, blocking the sky. Something was so big I couldn't see its edge. The entire house was ransacked. Everything had been thrown to the floor, broken, ripped. I wouldn't have slept through it. I, I wake up at the slightest sounds, and this, this was chaos. Emily wasn't in the kitchen. She wasn't in her room or outside. My sister was nowhere. I was the only one home. But I didn't feel alone. And I haven't since. <laughs> Thank you.